So we know that despite the best standards of care, patients still have cardiovascular events. There's been a lot of interest in something called epigenetics, and this is where on top of your chromosome, you basically have an additional machinery that sits on there that upregulates genes, some of them with adverse effects. The way that happens is with these BET, so-called BET proteins that bind to certain parts of the DNA, and in addition to that, they bind things called transcription factors, which increase the production of, of bad things, basically, that cause heart attacks and strokes. Apobetalone is a small molecule that binds to this scaffold and basically causes it to unravel. So these things that are called transcription factors can't upregulate genes causing harm. And that's what we studied. So this is a cardiovascular outcome study. We knew from the previous work there's no obvious real biomarkers that give us an idea of who to select, how long to treat, etc. for. So what we did was we used phase two data and we identified groups where there might be a bigger treatment effect. People with diabetes, people with high C-reactive protein inflammation, and people with a low HDL. So the outcomes trial was in a population, all with diabetes, with a recent acute coronary syndrome, and on top of standard of care, they got apobetalone versus placebo, and we looked at hard cardiovascular outcomes, CV death, non-fatal MI stroke. So we saw that in the placebo group, at 26 months of follow-up, the event rate was about 12.5%, and it was about 2% lower. We had 274 events, and the hazard ratio was 0.82, upper boundary 1.04, so just missed statistical significance. When we exclude deaths of unknown uh, origin, which normally are classified in this type of study in a post-MI population as cardiovascular, if you look at that, then the hazard ratio is 0.79, upper boundary of the confidence interval 1.01, .01, P of 0.06. But all the components of the primary endpoint, with the exception of stroke, go in the right direction and heart failure was lower by 41%, which is significant, but you can't overinterpret that when the primary endpoint isn't significant. So this is the first proof of concept of epigenetic modification in a cardiovascular outcomes trial in a large patient population followed up for 26 months. Yep. So we're going to do a number of further analyses within this. So is the benefit more early, the curve separated very early? So that might help think about how long in a clinical setting you would treat patients for, because maybe this is something you want to do to normalize epigenetic processes over a certain period of time and then allow other things then that, that matter to, to longer term to kick in like blood pressure and cholesterol. So we will be doing all of those, but I think this really begs the question of we don't need a very large study, this is two and a half thousand, but perhaps a study of four to five thousand patients with about another 150 endpoints would have allowed this to be really significant and therefore that then becomes a treatment in a high-risk patient population, diabetes, post-ACS, and opening the door for this approach. Uh, so I think further studies are definitely warranted. It's really encouraging and it gives us a new treatment option. It's got to be developed.